espionage. The world of spies and covert agents portrayed on the big screen always involves fast cars, dangerous situations, lots of guns, large yachts and nerdy wells who ultimately get their comeuppance at the hand of a handsome spy. In the real world, espionage is rarely as exciting, especially when it comes to the very real and very common subject of industrial espionage. And it generally, from what various court cases can tell us, goes something like this. Person A works at Awesome Tech Inc, and they either get headhunted by someone at Super Mega Corp, or they decide that Awesome Tech Inc sucks and hasn't treated them very well. So they start looking for a job elsewhere and ultimately apply for a job at Awesome Tech Inc's biggest competitor, Super Mega Corp. During the interview, they're asked about their work at Awesome Tech Inc and some of the things they've done there. Sometimes hints are dropped surreptitiously about how awesome it would be to have Awesome Tech Inc's stuff, or sometimes it's even more subtle than that. But the end result is that Person A, who sometimes ends up recruiting Person B and Person C from Awesome Tech Inc as well, brings with them some form of trade secret from Awesome Tech Inc when they move to Super Mega Corp. It could be technical drawings, software, or as we've seen in actual court cases, documents relating to employee bonus structures and hiring practices. While industrial espionage might sound sexy, the term that's most commonly used to describe this kind of activity is simply IP theft. The passing of intellectual property, usually through a current or former employee, from one company to another, clandestinely and illegally. And it's fairly common in the electric vehicle world. Right now, there are about half a dozen lawsuits between various electric and mainstream automakers throwing around accusations of IP fraud. This week, one of those cases came to the fore after the US International Trade Commission, or USITC for short, ruled on a particularly important case between two rival companies from South Korea, LG Energy Solution, LG Chem's battery subsidiary, and SK Innovation, the battery subsidiary of the SK Group. LG Energy Solution claimed that SK Innovation had headhunted more than 70 employees from LG Chem in order to steal its trade secrets and thus infringed on the company's patents. SK Innovation then fired back a later lawsuit accusing its rival of infringing on some of its patents when building electric car battery packs for Jaguar Land Rover and Audi. I think you can see there's no love lost between these two companies for sure. And as a side for the rest of this video, I'm going to refer to them as LG and SKI, partly because it's quicker and partly because LG Chem spun off its battery division last year while this court case was ongoing. In its decision released earlier this week, the US ITC sided with LG on the matter of IP theft the details of which I will get to in a second, but this story already gets complicated at this point because some of the headlines that have been flying around aren't all that accurate. Many, for example, claim that the decision leaves both Volkswagen and Ford, SKI's two biggest automotive customers in the US, without any batteries for their upcoming electric vehicle programs. Others claim this will essentially cripple or end Volkswagen and Ford's hopes to ever sell electric vehicles in the United States. But the reality is much more nuanced. Ford and Volkswagen will be fine in the short term for reasons I'll come to later in this video. But first, let's go over the basics of the case and help you understand exactly what's been going on. While the too long didn't read of this particular battle revolves around IP infringement by SKI, LG and SKI have been duking it out for some time. In fact, they've been trading blows and issuing cross litigations for lithium ion battery technology all the way back to 2011. Importantly, however, in 2014, the two companies agreed to an out of court settlement that, among other things, agreed to drop all outstanding litigations. There were several, as well as promised not to sue each other for 10 years. Ostensibly, they signed a truce. I know what you're thinking 2014 plus 10 equals 2024. You'd be right, the truce ended early. The case that's just ended at the US ITC is clearly a contravention of that agreement, but ultimately LG won the case after it had become clear that SKI had engaged in what the legal profession calls spoliation of evidence. 
In this case, spoliation refers to SKI intentionally destroying or modifying evidence considered essential to the case. An administrative judge last year at the US ITC issued a default judgment in favour of LG because of this spoliation of evidence, and this week's ruling backed that preliminary judgment up 100%. As part of its case, LG sought to prevent SKI from importing any materials or equipment into the US that were tied to the manufacturing of electric vehicle battery cells, stuff that violated its patents and IP. SKI wanted the same for LG, but lost. LG also sought to prevent Kia from importing the e-Nero to the US, since the batteries inside the Kia e-Nero are made by SKI for Kia using technology, which you've guessed it, LG Chem says infringes its patents. It got its wish, but it did get some pretty big loopholes, which is what most outlets are not reporting. Due to the ruling, SKI is banned for 10 years from importing batteries, battery cells, battery modules, or battery manufacturing equipment to the US that make use of any LG patented stolen technology. The US ITC has imposed a cease and desist order against the company to prevent it from making or selling any battery products in the US that, again, make use of stolen LG Chem technology. The loopholes are important, though, because they soften the black and white of the ruling that I've just told you about. First, the US ITC has provided SKI with a two-year limited exception to the ruling so it can provide Volkswagen with electric vehicle battery packs for its MEB platform electric vehicles. In the US, of course, this pretty much translates to the ID4 electric SUV. Second, the US ITC has given SKI a four-year limited exception to its ruling in order for it to provide Ford with battery cells and battery packs for the upcoming 2022 Ford F-150 electric pickup truck. Both of these vehicles have already completed development. Volkswagen is currently readying its Chattanooga production line for domestic ID4 production to start this year, and Ford is in the process of finalising its production plans for the electric F-150. So why make these two exceptions? Well, that is simple. The US ITC's purpose is not only to ensure healthy trade occurs into and out of the US, but it also exists to advise both the legislative and executive branch of the US government, enforce copyright and patent infringement, as well as ensuring that, overall, US businesses are supported. A ruling without these exceptions would have disadvantaged both Ford and Volkswagen. So these exceptions allow both automakers to begin production as planned, which is something that's super important if we're going to transition the US to electric, while also giving each ample time to find a new battery supplier. In a similar way, there's another important exception, one that's very important to owners of Kia electric vehicles that are fitted with SKI battery packs. The US ITC has said that SKI can continue to provide replacement parts and service to Kia for any vehicles sold before the hearing date that use SKI batteries. That again protects American customers from any issues caused by an act that they had no part in causing. So where does this leave SKI and its battery customers long term? Well, it's not allowed to produce or import batteries made using any of the patents it's accused of infringing. It still claims the patents weren't secret, but rather industry-wide knowledge. And I think it could produce batteries in the US and be free from the restrictions if said batteries used none of the disputed technologies, although apparently that would be very difficult to achieve. It could, more likely, work with LG to come up with an agreement that would allow both parties to carry on as before and effectively nullify the US ITC order. Ford and Volkswagen are both very eager to see this happen, and while there may be some financial burdens for SKI going down this route, such as licensing or other fees to pay to LG, it would ensure that it could continue to produce and sell electric car batteries for US automakers. SKI has hinted that it's going to appeal the decision from the Biden administration. Reducing the batteries available to the automotive industry would seriously hamper the president's goal of accelerating electric vehicle adoption rates. But I am also very cognizant that that's not the style of the current US administration, and it would be far more likely for the federal government to try and broker a peace deal between both companies than simply just to overturn the ruling. 
Right now, this will not impact day-to-day -day electric vehicle production, at least not when you're talking about production already planned. But long term, this will make things worse, not better, for the battery electric vehicle industry. Both LG and SKI are large companies who frankly haven't behaved particularly well in the past, and LG especially has been responsible for many delays and problems in the EV world. It's currently in the crosshairs for battery cells it produced in South Korea for early model year Chevrolet Bolt EVs and Hyundai Kona EVs, both of which have suffered a spate of vehicle fires related to battery system failures. And while LG has expanded its production facilities, already has production in the US for the Bolt EV and Bolt EUV cells, which it's had for a few years now, as well as the new Ultium factory, and has signed an additional supply contract with Tesla, it's likely that getting 10 years without SKI in the marketplace could propel it to almost monopoly-like status for non-Tesla production lines. And honestly, I don't think the EV world would benefit from monopolies, nor would we as end consumers. In short then, I hope SKI and LG hug it out. I'm not condoning the actions of SKI, but from the history these two firms have, this is the decade-long battle between Apple and Samsung. And that only hurt customers. There's enough battery demand and the market is certainly big enough for both of these firms to coexist and make a profit. And so I hope common sense wins out. And with a global battery shortage, well, it is all hands on deck. That's it for today. As always, thanks to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons. That's John Lyons, Regine Fellows, Jeffrey Songster, Anonymous Freak, Paul Conway, Laura Sanborn, Anthony Coates, and Tazla in the Gong. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters. Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Sean Ueda, Will Graylin, and Ian. You can join all of these amazing Patreon supporters just by following one of the links below or use those links to send us a donation through Ko-fi or Bitcoin. You'll also find a link below to our free Discord server. So sign up and come and join in the chatting fun. And you might want to check out our swag store. That's over at Redbubble. After the names have finished scrolling, you will see a suggestion for a new video to watch. So please consider watching it if you haven't. And I will be back very soon. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving.